Convoy. Let's head to Kuwait City now for the national anthems. Uh, after that, your commentator, Simon Hill, Andy Harper. Well, it began a year ago with a plodding performance in Southeast Asia, plumbed the depths in Canberra, and was only resurrected by two solid, if unspectacular, performances against Oman. But tonight, Australia's Asian Cup campaign, littered with potholes, will have a happy ending if they can defeat Q8. It won't be easy. Q8, not the powerhouse of the region they once were, but they are dogged, they are organised, and they are very capable. Australia, undermanned inexperienced and far from home on a pitch that has less green on it than the strip at the SCG. Can the Roos emulate the baggy green by pulling off an unlikely victory? There's a great noise around the stadium, free entry for the locals and they've packed the stands. It should be a great atmosphere and hopefully a fantastic occasion. All our officials are from Uzbekistan. The referee is Ravshan Ermatov, twice Asian referee of the year. And this is the team Australia must defeat tonight. Highly motivated and no doubt full of confidence following their win in Canberra last March. Craig Moore captaining the Socceroos for the 13th time. He's one of the more experienced wearing green and gold tonight. His opposite number, the Kuwaiti goalkeeper Nawaf Al-Khaldi. This venue, the Kuwait Sports Club, is where Kuwait won the Gulf Cup back in 1974, thrashing Saudi Arabia 4-0 in the final. And uh, local club side Al-Kuwait also won the 2009 AFC Cup here, defeating Al-Karama. So this venue holds good memories for this team. Kuwait without this suspended Walid Juma and coach Goran Tufegzic had a tough choice to make in goal where Shehab Kankoni played well in the recent friendly with the Romanian under-23 side, but he's gone with Nawaf Al-Khaldi, who also captains the team. Yusuf Nasser leads the line after scoring both goals in that game against the Romanians. Australia, a decent blend of overseas and local players. Moore, Wiltshire, Stojowski, Thompson, even Colosimo, the season campaigners. The other end of the spectrum, Matty Kemp makes his senior debut. Dean Heffernan wins just his second cap. And Nicky Carl gets a rare start, just his third in a dozen appearances. Matthew Kemp, by the way, becoming uh, Australian player number 536 for the statistically minded amongst you. And this will be a real test for some of these players. Thankfully, the uh, temperature's not quite as hot in this part of the world as we're normally used to. Mercury... Uh, currently topping around 19, 20 degrees, which is very comfortable, but the pitch won't be. It's bumpy, it's bare in places, and it's very hard and bouncy. Goran Tufegzic annoyed the Socceroos by sneaking in to watch their final training session here at this venue yesterday. He'll annoy them even further if he inflicts a second loss in the group stage this evening. So away we go in Q8 City, the home team playing in all blue, Australia in their traditional green and gold. And Andy Harper, this is going to be a very tough test for this fledgling Socceroos side tonight, but all three points can take them to Qatar in 12 months' time. 
Yeah, g'day Simon. Look, it's a big night for Australia in Asia. This will be a very difficult match against a country in Kuwait who has the wood on Australia really. Nine times we've played them. Five times they've beaten Australia with just one draw. So history favours the home team and as we've watched Kuwait run out into the field and line up, what catches my eye most dramatically is the size of their striker, number 54, Yusuf Nasser. He is towering above every Australian defender. And I think the conditions of the pitch will point to the fact that Kuwait will go long and direct. And Australia must, as I'm sure we'll expect them to do, batten down the hatches early. Well, they were practicing set pieces for uh, a long period of their training session here yesterday, both attacking and defending. Miller yet an act up over the halfway line, looking for Archie Thompson, who will uh, obviously look for support from the likes of Nick Carl and Miller Stajowski and Dario Vidicic, who's playing on the left hand side of that bank of three in behind the Melbourne victory striker. Just how bad is this pitch, Harps? Well, it's terrible. It's uneven, it's patchy, it's hard, I'd suggest, as well. The players will have very sore feet at the end of this, and it doesn't favour the ball players. You saw that pass there from Nick Carl take a bobble as it went on its way to Craig Moore. It'll be safety first, you'd imagine, from Australia, certainly until they settle into the rhythm of the match. Timber Bake, by, uh, by the way, has played merry hell with the AFC match commissioner yesterday regarding the state of the surface. And uh, as a result, you might not see too many back passes this evening from the Socceroos. They were uh, working on those yesterday. They have got themselves a throw in. Yep, in a couple of minutes. Level with the edge of the penalty box. Dean Heffernan to deliver. It's a good long one. Yedinak was leaping and it's volleyed into the back of the net by Luke Wilkshire. Australia have the lead after less than two and a half minutes and Luke Wilkshire is becoming a real lucky charm in the Asian Cup. Terrific finish. Well, fresh from his goal scoring exploits in Musket. On the previ previous excursion into Asia by the Socceroos, Luke Wiltshire has done it again. Enjoying a break from the freezing Russian winter as that league goes into recess. It's Luke Wiltshire who hasn't mucked around. Beautiful technique, it was a difficult one to volley and these balls as well are very light. But Luke Shear controlled that beautifully in Australia with a golden start. Well, Luke Wilkshire scores in successive games for the Socceroo. Well, what do Kuwait have in response? They're away at the other end. And that's uh, a very solid challenge indeed. Which uh, provides Australia with a goal kick. Well, great pace shown by Hamad Ali. Another late inclusion, hasn't played in the Asian Cup so far for Kuwait. He showed a very clean pair of heels against Matthew Kemp. Q8 lining up with a 4-2-3-1 ostensibly. What a start for Australia. Their first ever goal, by the way, in this country. Their previous two visits. They lost them both and weren't able to hit the target. It's taken them less than two and a half minutes here tonight. Well, typically, Simon, all the speculation about the Australian style of play in the local press was about strong, direct, physical play, and it was the long throw from Heffernan which found the soft centre of the Kuwait defence. The Greener Gold have got another chance here. Nicky Carl to deliver a free kick. It's awkward for the defence, and it's 2-0! Unbelievable! Dean Heffernan! Australia almost out of sight, perhaps, in the first five minutes. And a debut goal in the green and goal for the Central Coast Mariners. Incredible stuff. Well, it's a brilliant start by Australia. Nick Carl with the curling free kick. It is less than what you'd expect from a national team as far as defending is concerned. That is woeful from Q8. Defending their goal, an early onslaught from Australia. Complete ineptitude. But Dean Heffernan's the man. Archie Thompson was primed as well to score his first goal since 2006, but it's Dean Heffernan of the Mariners launching Australia almost out of sight.
Well, what an unbelievable start. I don't think even Pim Verbeek would have dreamed it would have gone this well. Kuwait are undefeated under coach Goran Tovedzic. And they've defended much better than the opening five minutes here has suggested until now. Two set pieces, one long throw, one free kick. Australia two goals to the good. Talk about taking the sting out of the local crowd, which has turned up in very good numbers. An outstanding atmosphere here at the Kuwait Sports Club. What a moment for Dean Heffernan, just his second international cap. The brief, no doubt, was uh, defensive in terms of the Central Coast Mariner, but here he is celebrating a goal after less than five minutes. Just look at the way that ball is bouncing around. Very difficult for either set of players to control it. It's pinball wizard at the moment. It's played forward by Hussein Fadel. Miles Dajowski can't quite control it. Fahad Shaheen does. Ahmad Ali down the line for the dangerous Bada Al Matawa. Skips around one challenge. He's got great feet, this guy. Eventually, Australia resolve it. Only temporarily, they've given it straight back to the team in blue. And howls of frustration as the pass goes awry. And I suppose if there is a slight question mark for Australia now, Harps, is it that they've scored too early? Well. It's that dreaded Not two... Not that we're complaining. No, no, no. It's that dreaded, dreaded two-goal lead. But interestingly, Kuwait, having conceded such soft goals so quickly, they've still got a bit of a spring in their step. The crowd hasn't stopped from encouraging them. Australia can't bundy off yet. Very prescient prediction from our cabbie on the way to the ground who said Australia by two goals. He also said we have to pay him uh, 50 Kuwaiti dollars on the way back if he's right. Well, that's your arrangement, not mine, <laughs> so I'm gonna, you're on your own. <laughs> Thanks, Hobbs. Matthew Kett, good ball to pick out Nick Carl. Australia settled pretty well. Archie Thompson just uh, straying into an offside position. We've seen him do that on plenty of occasions for Melbourne victory. Plays right on the shoulder of the last defender. Good call from the Uzbek official. Kuwait, by the way, unbeaten in the last nine matches. And in fairness, there's been uh, one or two teams who uh, you could rather unkindly call pretty soft opposition in there. They've thrashed Kenya by five goals to nil. But defeating the Romanian under-23 sides 2-0 as they did a few days ago is uh, not to be sniffed at. As we saw in Canberra, they are a useful outfit. Now Archie Thompson is onside this time. Hussein Fadl playing him on. Thompson's around one defender, but again that's bobble of the ball. Made it difficult to control. Kuwait, only one of three a Asian countries against whom Australia doesn't have a winning record. Looking to turn that around, and they've started brilliantly here at the Kuwait Sports Club. We've already referred to this on, but Pim Verbeek was ropeable yesterday at the AFC Commission at the state of this pitch and the selection of the stadium. Kemp caught out of position. And away goes Hamad Ali. And Kemp's done well to recover some ground there. Did enough to put him off balance. Looks like already a great contest, that one. Hussain Ali, Hamad Ali rather, very quick across the ground, as is Matt Kemp. We talk about it a lot in the A-League coverage. His ability to turn and chase and turn beaten situations into winning situations defensively. This is the first work that uh, Eugene Golakovic has really had to do. Great start for Australia, ten minutes played, two goals to the good. Dean Heffernan with his first for the green and gold, and Luke Wilkshire, incidentally, along with uh, Miller Stajowski, is the only survivor from uh, the team that lost at this venue 2-0 in the last Asian Cup qualifiers back in 2006. 
was a bit warmer that night, I fancy. Well, one of the questions Pimper Bake had of the commissioner, AFC commissioner, was why such a big game was being played at the club ground and not the national stadium. Well, Q8 have performed very well here. They didn't qualify for the World Cup, but all the World Cup qualifiers in which they scored goals were at this ground. No surprise on that basis that the Q80 FA would nominate Q8 Sports Club as the venue. It does leave a lot to be desired. But who cares for the green and gold at the moment? 2 0 up before five minutes have ticked over. Yeah, it's a pretty uh, basic facility, but it's feeling like home from home for the Socceroos at the moment. Archie Thompson penalised. Kuwait, by the way, the 11th richest nation on earth, a population of just uh, 3 million. They like Australia, desperate to be in neighbouring Qatar in 12 months' time. They missed out, of course, on the last finals, knocked out by Australia and Bahrain. Picked up in midfield by Wilkshire. Exchanges passes with uh, the other goal scorer, Dean Heffernan. Manoeuvres his way past Salah Al Hendi. Is then brought to ground. Free kick. Gerard Al Ataiki, the man who made the challenge. So another set piece for Australia. This time Vidasic to take. Kuwait's defensive nerves been settled. Dealt with by Masayat Neda Al Enzi, the man who scored the winner in Canberra last March. Ahmad Ali has uh, taken a knock, coming together of uh, the bodies between here and Matthew Kemp. As you said, Hart's going to be a good contest, that one. And Australia's right. Intelligent play by Farhad Shaheen. This is Jara Al Ataiki. Craig Moore's header. Yet an act to Kemp. Clears his lines, only as far as Farhad Shaheen. Well, again, they look for that ball over the top. Well, this is the other comment made in the local press, apart from the physicality of Australia, the strength of Australia, the directness of Australia. I reckon the defence is slow. The local press, I'm sure quite who's been feeding them that. It's seen with Matthew Camp and Dean Heffern in particular all things be considered slow they will continue to look to exploit the space over the top you'd expect based on the comments made but Australia out scrapping Q8 at the moment that was good anticipation too by uh, Simon Colosimo back in the Australian side for the first time since February 2007 he's uh, committed a foul there though the Sydney FC defender after he was happy to let play go he won't on that occasion Uh, Yusuf Nasser who was the recipient of a fairly rambunctious challenge from Colosimo there is uh, Yusuf Nasser and this was Colosimo's challenge but it was Dario Vidasic who copped the word on the run from the referee Case of mistaken identity, no damage done though, no cards were administered. Now Hamad Ali is very carelessly giving the ball straight to Archie Thompson. Who uh, runs down a bit of a blind alley but gets the throw in. Much to the disgust of Messi Nada Al Enzi. Matthew Kemp will perhaps think about uh, another long throw, or maybe not. Craig Moore looks for Heffernan in space on the left. You can see that ball took about uh, three or four bounces before it came under the 
Mariners' man's control. But it's a great story for Dean Heffernan, not even in the original selection from Pimper Bake. Took Jason Kalina's injury for Heffernan to get called up to the squad, and it's been a very impressive week of training. Well, I can assure you it's uh, not Nicky Carl, despite what the caption says, that uh, scored the second goal. The other information we had, Simon, was that Scott Jamison had been penciled in as the starting left fullback here before the camp began. Experienced work there from Craig Moore. Untroubled, just dumbing. Make a play on the ball and Eugene Kolekovic cleaning up. Yeah, Jamison not even on the bench tonight, Harps. Well, from, it's from the... left back to left out completely. It's a nice line, Simon. I know you were practicing that one before the game. <laughs> Got a laugh out of me once. <laughs> I thought I'd try a second time. Why not? Why not? It is fascinating though. Jamison came back into the calculations as well. So whilst he started slowly, Heffernan was so impressive that he's made that left fullback position his own with a goal to boot. And does the long throw count as an assist? Sure, he'll claim it. That's a lovely turn by Bada Almatoa. Too high from Yusuf Nassi. You can hear the frustration amongst the home fans. And with a long throw, as Dean Heffernan has shown he's got, does that put him on the shopping list for Arsenal in the January transfer window? Arsene Wenger complaining about long throws in, in the Premier League. Well, if he has his way, there won't be any throw-ins. <laughs> Just old Scott Jamison, by the way. The uh, rumour is, unconfirmed, that uh, he may be set for a trial in Belgium with Circle Bruges. Interesting. Yedinak's height is going to be a useful asset. Australia as well. It's a loose one. Rooks are trying to tidy up. Dangerous tackle. I'll take you there. The referee is going to make sure this one comes back. He'll have a chat with the number 18 for Q8. There's a wayward pass from Milos Terjoski. He's had a couple early doors here. Jana Alataiki, who uh, plays his club football at this ground for Al Kuwait. Actually captain of the club that won the uh, AFC Cup here a few weeks ago. And his surname, I'm told in Arabic, means the surgeon. Wilkshire looking for Thompson. Whether Al Enzi was there. Now Farhad Shaheen. Atiki. Well controlled by Yedinak and then uh, Wilkshire to Kemp. ball by Simon Colosimo. Jakub uh, Altaha. Father Almatawa. Beautiful ball. This is Salah Alhendi. Back to Jakub Altaha. Just showed a bit too much of it to Dario Vidicic. Timber Bake, I'm sure, will be very, very pleased given all his concerns about the pitch particularly yesterday as to the way his side has acquitted themselves in this opening 20 minutes well they're looking largely untroubled at the moment there have been a couple of glimpses of what Q8 has to offer but rocked by the poor defending and the predatory instinct of Australia it's going to take something special for Kuwait to get out of this Australia looking very balanced and composed Yedinek and Wiltshire have been outstanding Difficult circumstances for midfielders who need to control the play to have the ball bobbling around as it, as it is. They're doing a tremendous job. Another good ball by Yedinak. This is Dean Heffernan. Time as well to measure the cross and Archie Thompson took it first time. Not too far away. You need to do well there, Archie Thompson. Perhaps his run just a little mistimed. He was well in front of the front post. 
as he looked to hook the ball. Goldwood, good work from Dean Heffern and Dario Vitasic was just behind Thompson. He's had a bit of angle at goal, but Thompson has been lively early. Foul on uh, Badral Matawa by Luke Wilkshire. Kuwait do look nervous, don't they, Hobbs? Particularly defensively. Not really settled into their game at all. That's to Australia's credit. Big expectations on this team. Large crowd on hand. Well, they're not historically high-scoring matches, Australia Kuwait. Throughout the course of the nine-game history, just averaging 1.6 goals per game or some such already Australia with two Ahmed Ali's cross Heffernan's header Way only as far as Al, Al Amar and then Yakub Al Taha into the grateful arms of Eugene Galakovic Vitasic still uh, struggling for game time at his club side in Germany. Soccer's colleague uh, Matthew Branovic, by the way, faring even worse. He's only played once this season. Oh, no, that was against Bayern Munich. Such as uh, last outing for Nuremberg was uh, as a sub against Freiburg in late November. Talk of both players perhaps looking at a lone move. Lots of these uh, Socceroos, of course, looking to secure World Cup berths. Maybe packing their bags over the next few weeks. Here's one of them, Nicky Carl. Very strong challenge, too strong. And a yellow card, the first one of the game to Hamad Ali. Well, a sign that Kuwait are nervous and anxious. The great sayings in Kuwaiti life where led to believe his patience is the key to relief. Well, they cannot afford to be patient from this point on, and it's a lunging effort from. Hamad Ali to attract the yellow card. More importantly, it's given uh, Australia another chance to put pressure on now off Alcaldi's goal. Variation, Carl Wilkshire chips it in. And the goalkeeper fields. Kuwait, by the way, have made uh, a very sharp substitution. They've brought on uh, Hamad Al Enzi, who is a striker, number 16. There he is. Looks to me like it's Al Atiki off, number 18. Yep, I think the right hops. Interesting because he was has been one of Kuwait's more prominent. Here goes Vitasic. Again, careless by the Kuwaitis. Vitasic only has Thompson to aim at. He very nearly picked him out. Good patient play by Dario Vitasic. Chance still there for Australia. Wilkshire combining with Nicky Carl. Good football by the green and goal. They get a corner. Excellent work. A really excellent work. This team has had a week to gel. By all reports out of the Australian camp, it's been one of the more fruitful camps, training camps. And Vitasic 
leaving Hussein Ali for dead, getting a good cross in. Nassad Al Enzi pinching the ball off Archie Thompson, who was poised to strike. And then nice interplay from Wiltshire and Carl to win the corner. Australia going from strength to strength. 25 in. First quarter of the game. Another set piece for the Socceroos to try and exploit. Four weights inside the box. Stajowski went for a little flick at the near post. Get enough contact on it. Bit of Sitch's ball back in. Get a next header subsequently. Volley clear by Salah Alhendi. Now Matthew Kemp slightly out of position. He's herring back to get in line and Craig Moore very intelligently just held his line there. Knew that uh, Bader Alma Tower was going to stray offside. More importantly, the back line that's been working for a week in Dubai all appealed in unison. Right on message. They are doing a good job. Matt Kemp just a little exuberant as he looked to break down the right hand side with the ball in possession. His touch couldn't be retrieved and his right fullback position was momentarily vacant but his other three colleagues in defence organised themselves beautifully. Timber Bake by the way I can tell you is uh, just having a word with uh, the fourth official on the sideline. I'm not quite sure what it's all about but he's uh, rather unhappy the Dutch coach. He's also just reignited communication between himself and the AFC Commissioner who's sitting in the front of the VIP section. Yusuf Nasser offside. Any idea what uh, all that was about? Well, a couple of the Australian players have gone into the technical area for refreshments. Perhaps the fourth official is suggesting unless the referee stops play that shouldn't be the case. I can't think of anything else otherwise. A couple of the Kuwaitis you mean? I thought you said Australian, sorry. Now you got me confused Simon, yeah. I don't know what I said. <laughs> <laughs> We'll leave it there. This is uh, Salah Alhendi. It's no more than a hopeful prod forward by uh, Hamad Ali. Australia under no real pressure at all in this opening 30 minutes. They couldn't have scripted it better, Hobbs. No, they haven't. But, uh, Serbian coach of Kuwait, Goran Tvedzic, has changed to a diamond shape in midfield. An extra player up front. The substitute. Well, Alenzi, the number 16, has gone to join Yusuf Nasser as a two-pronged attack. Vardar playing at the top of the diamond just in behind the two strikers. Well, Specky referee, by the way, having a very stern talk to Assad Neda Al Enzi. Pretty sure that's uh, for trying to referee the game. This is Farhad Shaheen. So in Fardel, immediately under pressure by the athletic Dario Vidicic. Bada Almatoa. Again, a robust challenge by Colosimo, but a fair one. And now Kemp. Afraid to venture forwards. Stachowski tracking back to cover him. Carl picks it up in midfield. He's trying to work it out to Heffernan. A 
Vidasic. Stajowski with Kemp on the overlap. Opted for the early one. Picked up by Wilkshire. And a very good attack otherwise. Switching play from right to left, Australia. Dario Vidasic is looking the part so far this evening. Of course, attacking players like Vitasic can so much more easily slip into the rhythm of a game if the central midfielders are doing their job. And Wilkshire and Yedinek have just been outstanding in this opening half hour. Colosimo and Moore behind them as well has been cool as cucumbers. Picking off the Q80 attacks. Catching Q80 forwards offside. It's been a very complete half hour from Australia. Well, the bank uh, clearly remembers Canberra last March when uh, he waits. Fairly played through the Australian midfield at will. Yedinak and Wilkshire providing superb screening tonight. There's a problem with uh, Hamad Ali, who's just come to the touchline. Dispose of some jewellery. Instruction of the referee. Free kick's going to have to be taken again. The three wasn't ready. He's going to check uh, the adornments of Ahmad Ali as well. Now perhaps a first real test for the Socceroos. Free kick in a decent position from which they scored in Canberra last March and that was a very good delivery indeed and Yusuf Nasser in particular and Mesut Al Enzi who did score that goal in the Australian capital were the closest to it and Craig Moore was left in their wake I'm not sure amongst the melee of players if there was a foul there's Moore sandwiched between the two and his footing lost from that point on neither Mesut Al Enzi nor Yusuf Nasser could get their angles right Enzi penalised for going over the top of Archie Thompson and he's fallen heavily too. And he's a bruising defender is Mesad Al Enzi. Oh, we'll see he came off second best. Makes his way back to his station in the centre of Q White's defence. A defence which crumbled early. Australia's first two set pieces resulting in two goals before five minutes had elapsed here at the Q8 Sports Club. Not the best free kick from Dario Vidisic, but he has been impressive. Now our Falcaldi beaten on two occasions. Opening five minutes. Australia at the moment set fair for the Asian Cup finals for the second time next January Salah Alhendi neat work piece of ball too to Jakub Altaha Now Hussein Fadl. Fadl al Matawa, and they've sprung the offside trap. This is Yusuf Nasser squares it up. Oh, he's uh, forced his teammate to substitute Hamad Al Enzi a bit wide. And the chance has gone, has it for Kuwait? It has. Well, the first time really that Kuwait have gotten in behind the Socceroos defence, and there was a moment of panic there. Yeah, there was a golden moment. A golden moment for Kuwait. Australia's back four breached, it was squandered appallingly by Yusuf Nasser there, his decision making almost as bad as his touch on the pass and Australia breathed a deep sigh of relief. It's the first error the green and gold have made, Kuwait not good enough to capitalise. Should give uh, Jakub Altar some uh, credit as well. 
Very intelligent play. Free kick squirts off the uh, foot of Vidicic and volleyed over the top by Hamad Alenzi. That was a beautiful through ball in that last attack from Badia. He is. There it is there. Beautiful left foot. Pass slid through the vacant gap, such that there was one between Colosmo and Heffernan. But Yusuf Nasser got it all wrong. Substitute Hamad Al Anezi couldn't round the ball up. Australia escaped. And he is a wonderful player, Bada Al Motua. National hero of Kuwait. There is Hamad Al Anezi again. Greg Moore beats him to it. Good strong play by the Australian captain. Archie Thompson is surely offside. He is. And when I say of Bade Simon, he's the new national hero taking over from Basha Abdullah, a player who in his career scored 75 goals in 134 games for his national team. It's quite a strike rate. No wonder he was the fans' favourite. And it is a measure of the quality of Bade that he is challenging for that mantle. Already tonight, a couple of nice touches. It was indeed his free kick in Canberra that set up the goal for Q8. Australia are therefore warned. Turns 25 in uh, two days' time. Badar Al Matawa plays for Al Qadisia. Currently the dominant club in the Kuwaiti League, at the top of the table. Scores goals too, 10 last year. Second top goal scorer in the Kuwaiti League. The same final. Finding Yusuf Nasser. Can he atone for that earlier error? Well, it's poor play again from Yusuf Nasser. He had one front position. Craig Moore not obliged to do anything other than shepherd him away, which the Aussie skipper did very well. We just uh, received some interesting news, Harps, from uh, the Australian contingent as we watched that moment with Yusuf Nasser again. The, uh, the reason Pimper Bake was speaking to the AFC match commissioner is that apparently somebody in the crowd is shining a laser beam into the Australian players' eyes. So uh, apparently the authorities are onto it, are looking for the culprit. Thankfully renders my explanation about complaining of Aussie players getting refreshments completely <laughs> pathetic. That was the best I could do at the time. And my subsequent botch up of your explanation. One all then. Now Colosimo has been caught very late there. Ahmad Alanezi is uh, pleading with the referee not to put him in the notebook. That's the earlier challenge on uh, Dean Heffernan. That wasn't the uh, incidents that caused Colosimo the pain, that was. Simon Colosimo up and ready to go, his first international since 2007 thoroughly deserved been in great form in the a-league now salah al hendi dallying too long almost allowing nicky carl to nip in and then a mistake by colosimo kuwait could be in here hamad alanezi tries for goal and scores Q8 back in the game just before the half-time break and it's Hamad Alanezi with a super finish. Simon Colosimo's mistake and how Hamad Alanezi, the substitute, made him pay. Game on. Oh, it's a belting finish from the substitute and credit the coach for making the change. We didn't half expect Hamad Alanesi to be in the starting lineup, but he had to make do with a bench position until he was thrust 
into the contest and Colosimo just seconds after we've acknowledged his good performance so far couldn't stretch to receive the ball and Hamad Elanese summed up the situation beautifully and he's driven the ball through Craig Moore's watch and Eugene Galekovic rooted to the spot and it is definitely game on Australia's very impressive 40 minutes slightly coming undone Listen to the crowds, they're back involved. Australia kept them very quiet. Ahmad Alanezi. And now the questions will be asked of the back line. Galekovic forced to play sweeper. Would you believe Ahmad Alanezi was uh, the man who was fouled that free kick in Canberra back last March. Matthew Kemp is the man foul on that occasion. Well, there's a lot of electricity in the air here at the Q8 Sports Club. Much of it was anxious. But that goal from Hamad Alanezi has breathed life into the faithful here. Colosimo, Matt, that's absolutely on the full inside the centre circle and Archie Thompson's pace posed the question for Masayad Leda Alenzi. Well, it was the second time Australia had been breached in that part of the field. Yusuf Nasser butchered the first opportunity. Now, here's Miller Yadinak. It opened up for him just for a moment. Good defensive block. Now Vitasic up against Jakub Altaja. It's a goal kick and look at the urgency now amongst the Q80 players. They sense they've got an opportunity. It's not a moment that Simon Colosimo will look back on with any fondness. But it's a terrific finish. And there's a spring in the step of the team in blue. One day of half, at halftime, Pim Verbeek will perhaps revisit playing a high defensive line with a ball that's bobbling around. It is going to be the case that teams would expect will look to go early over the top of their space in behind. And that's certainly all the pre-game talk out of the Q8 camp was where they were looking to hurt Australia. Two occasions they've looked dangerous. And here's a third has been exactly from that tactic. It's by the Almatoa. He slips it through, Yusuf Nasser, it's 2-2! Unbelievable! Father Almatao with the assist, Yusuf Nasser with the exquisite finish with the left peg. And Australia have been pegged back. Well, he owed his team one, Yusuf Nasser, and he's repaid big time. It's a brilliant finish. But Australia again breached, arguably defending too high up the field. Here's the move in its final execution. Galekovic won't be overly proud of that effort at the near post. Again, it's Bada Olmatwa with the scything pass. It's gorgeous to watch. An exquisite finish. This proud nation back on level terms. All hands to the pump for the Socceroos, at least until half time, which is now only moments away. Two goals in four minutes for the team, nicknamed Al Azraq. And the Q8 Sports Club has come alive. And it's been a disastrous five minute spell for the green and gold after starting so well. Well, they've got to get to grips with Bara Al Matwa. There'll be one minute of stoppage time as Heffernan hurls a long one, flicked on by Yedinak. 
Fahad Shaheen gets it clear. Picked up by Hamad Ali. Thumps it long, looking for Hamad Alanezi. Colosimo was there. Nicky Carl picks it up in midfield, chips it over the top. Archie Thompson. Help arriving in the shape of Miller Stajowski. Thompson going on his own. And saved at the near post by Nawaf Alcaldi. He had no other option, really, I don't think, Archie Thompson. Well, you'd, you'd fancy that by the time help had arrived, Archie had almost given up on them. But real issues for Pimberbake at half-time. A thoroughly convincing opening 35 minutes from the Socceroos. But for one scare, Yusuf Nasser butchering a chance to get it back to 2-1. But the five minutes leading into half-time, the blue wave. It's a blue tsunami here at the Q8 Sports Club. Very impressive. No emotion on the face of Goran Tufegzic. Knows the job is only half done, but they have managed to get themselves back on level terms. However unlikely that seemed after an opening five-minute salvo from the Socceroos. Luke Wiltshire and Dean Heffernan scoring the two goals, but in two in the space of five minutes from Hamad Alanezi and Yusuf Nasser brings to a close a quite breathless first 45 minutes in Q8 City, Bada Almatar at the centre of everything, Eugene Galekovic beaten twice, and it's all to play for in the second half. It should be some second period. At the interval in Q8 though, it's Q8 2, Australia 2. But that's a double-edged sword as well, you don't want to sit too far back because then you just invite pressure, so it's it's that fine line of what's what's you know not too high but don't sit too deep but it's look who knows what's going to happen who in the second knows? half i mean it's incredible what's happened already it is all to play for to all let's take you back now to simon hill and andy harper at the al q8 sports club stadium well welcome back to uh, q8 city where we're all still uh, digesting what has been a fascinating first 45 minutes and i'm sure there is uh, more to come and just to remind you that uh, Oman won earlier on today, so Oman, Kuwait and Australia at the moment all locked together on seven points at the top of Group B. So depending on what happens here, it could be uh, an even more fascinating final match day on March the 3rd. Kuwait taking on Oman and Australia of course playing Indonesia in Brisbane. However, three points for the Green and Golds would do the job tonight. And they look set fair for it for the best part of 35 minutes before Al Azraq the blue hit back and how. So it's Australia get us back on the way at the start of the second half. No further changes uh, made by the coaches. What I wonder will Pimber Bake's message have been in the uh, dressing sheds, Andy Harper? Well, worryingly for the bacon in that first half, Australia's back four, the space behind them was exposed a little too easily. We wonder what instructions were given to Craig Moore and Simon Colosimo in marshalling the troops, but quite simply, Australia has to get to grips with the number 17, Badea al -Motawa. He has put on the chance that was butchered and then the two goals to follow. He's quite some player. A-League clubs get the checkbook out, eh, Hubs? Well, why not? Plays semi-pro here in uh, Q8. Money, I'm sure he's on uh, a decent salary. And he is a terrific player. It's no wonder he's a national hero. He's just picked Australia apart on the two or three occasions when it was required. The A-League boys up until uh, that moment have done very well. Here's Dario Vidicic, who was outstanding in that first period. It's the centre in, clearing header by Hussein Fadl. But we'll say about Q8, despite the awful start to the match, they never seemed to lose their belief. And whilst it did take them until the dying stages of the first half to get back, firstly on the scoreboard and then level, teams of lesser mentality would have collapsed after that disastrous opening quite easily dealt with that setback psychologically and built their case from that point on. Dennis 
Kovacic with the attempted trickery. Came off the heel of uh, Matthew Kemp, throwing Q8. Has he acquitted himself yeah, in well, his uh, first international hunt? Well, which is on the evidence, this is not an easy place to play, even if you're a seasoned professional. But Kemp making his debut has worked very hard. He's been caught out once or twice, but his pace has got him back into position. Of course, it was through the left back, right back position where I should say the second goal was scored. Didn't necessarily be pinning that on Matthew Kemp, however. Yusuf Nasser on the end of that uh, free kick. Didn't quite get hold of that in the same way as he did his uh, equalising goal. Just a minute before the break. He's in here, man, in form. Two goals against the remaining number 23 side. He also scored against Jordan in a friendly last month. And his finish from uh, Alma Tower's pass was uh, one of real quality. Big flag behind uh, the players there on that far side, says Kangaroo, beware of the blue wave. And it was just that. So it's Hamad Ali, the player in the referee's note thus far. Fahad Shaheen with the centre, dealt with by Craig Moore and subsequently Yedinak. Got his best pass of the night. It's the right idea by uh, Yaku Baltaha. And his side, uh, good field position, if nothing else. <laughs> Whilst you're uh, looking at the VIPs, Matthew Kemp has given away a free kick. In a rather dangerous position. Oh, there's Hamad. Nezi who wriggled and got the better of Matthew Kemp. Free kick to be taken by that man Bader again. One of the quality that we've seen from the man in two games today. Mohamed Ali picks up the pieces. Crowd appealing for something on the edge of the Australian box. Archie Thompson looking very much isolated in these opening moments of the second period. No doubt that Kuwait had the initiative. It's not as though Australian audiences haven't been treated to the best of Bader before. He scored the second of the two goal defeat of the Socceroos. That was a handball on Luke Wilkshire. Crowd was right. Three years ago here in the Asian Cup qualifier, that 2 0 defeat to Kuwait. Here goes Bader Almatawa. Crowd on their feet. Oh, it's over the top from Salah Alhendi, but again, the trickery. A wonderful ball skill of Bada Almatawa causing Australia real problems. Well, it's the way he was able to stop, prop, and keep control of the ball on this very difficult surface. Sull out. Oh, Handy, the number eight, was the player who blazed away. It was a good chance for Q8. And that certainly got the better of things at the moment. The scores level, but the football is all in favour of Q8. A barnstorming finish to that first half. And they've started the second half with a lot of self belief. FIFA ranked 104 at the moment. Australia 21. But, uh, you wouldn't know it. Wilkshire's free kick, and it was a very awkward bounce for Nawaf Al-Khaldib have to deal with. He's collided with the post. 
Australia have a corner. Oh, yet in there, just behind players wondering quite how he didn't make contact on that ball it was as it was slung in from his midfield partner Luke Wilshere. It was yet in who'd made great position to get in front of Mesad Al Enzi. Take the work of Al Kaldi on the far post to reward Australia. There's the collision with the post, nothing much in it. The goalkeepers being as they are. Kelly having some uh, treatments. It's renowned as being the uh, best goalkeeper in the region after uh, Oman's Ali Al Habsi. A lot of serious pressure for his uh, spot in the national team from Shahab Kankoni. He's up on his feet. He's okay. Nicky Carl to take the set piece. Craig Moore lurking. It's a good solid fist clear by uh, Al Kaldi. Well, that's much better defending. He's down again. It was a good two-fisted punch on the ball. Yedinek had made good ground. Craig Moore was there or thereabouts as well. And I fancy it was Masad Alenzi who assisted his goalkeeper in clearing the danger. It's the sort of conviction in defending that one would expect from the home team. It wasn't in evidence in the opening five minutes. Australia sprung to that lead. Too late. Come back magnificently. And this is a real good what a test for Australia. Heffernan's going to sling in the long throw. Yedinak gets the flick. Hamad Ali thumps it away to safety. Ball just behind Heffernan, did well to keep it in play. That's a 1 2, breaks for Carl. Australia could be in here. Archie Thompson goes down, good solid tackle by Messiah and Alenzi. Poor clearance though. Heffernan telegraph the pass. Talal Al Palma with the clearance. This is Salah Al Hendi. There's such confidence you sense running through the Q8 team in stark contrast to the opening half an hour of the first half. And they could uh, barely string two passes together. Beautiful balance. Beautiful balance. Beautiful touch. And I've got a real sense of self belief about them. Repeat, I'm amazed it didn't evaporate after that terrible start. Even at the very moment they went down two goals, they continued to try and play. It's just that Australia were way too good for them in the opening half hour. That tide has completely turned. So up, uh, Al Hendy, the number eight. Right, Al Hendy, the number 16, the man on the ball now. Bye there. Beautiful players to watch, causing Australia real trouble. Father Ahmad Tower's delivery. Vinicic's header. Ahmad Ali trying to go through three Australian defenders. No trip by Moore, despite the crowd's appeals. Wilkshire back to Galakovic. You can see the ball bouncing all over the place in front of Eugene Galakovic. Very difficult, particularly that goal mouth away to our left for goalkeepers to control back passes. I fancy you're only uh, a second away as a keeper from a uh, Paul Robinson moment against Croatia. Oh. The towel was in check there. Pakistan referee was right on the spot and waved it away. Uh, be making a change very shortly. Nikita Rukovic who has just taken his training bib off. So he may be thrown into the fray. Meantime, Hamad Ali. Beautiful ball. Hamad Ali Nezi. Oh, it's just inches wide of Galekovic's right hand post. Oh, there's only one team in it at the moment. They're in blue. 
They've got enormous momentum behind them. Verbeek looking to try and stem that flow. All the substitutes now instructed to warm up. Nikita Rukovica indeed preparing to join the fray. Substitute again. What a good change that was from Goran Tufedzic, the coach of Q8. He's more often than not at the edge of his technical area, cajoling, encouraging, instructing, demanding of his troops to push up on Australia, to keep turning the screws. He can sense blood. Yedinak wins an important header, bit of a shank off the boot of Masayad Leda Alan Enzi, and it's behind for a corner. Some respite for the Socceroos. Pimba Baker's uh, just asked Craig Moore to come to the edge of the technical zone to talk no doubt about a bit of uh, tactical tinkering, perhaps with Rukovitsu's arrival in mind. I just wonder if it'd be for Milos Dajowski, he's been largely a peripheral figure so far. what Nicky Carl can do with this corner. Archie Thompson couldn't get there. Q8 looking to counter. Matthew Kemp back over the top. Goal kick Q8. Top of Stajotsky. Now Yusuf Nasser up against Craig Moore. Goes for goal. Ambitious. Well, full of confidence after this, the goal he did score. He shoot from all angles. You are the soothsayer, Harps, because uh, Miller Stajotsky has uh, been withdrawn by Australia. Nikita Rukovitsia on for just his second cap. And from uh, 20 Enskede. who's struggled for game time with his club in the Netherlands. What he will bring to the Socceroos is real speed. Here's Dario Vidicic trying to use his to get in behind the same final. Looks like Rukovic will play on the right-hand side. Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Unless they're just waiting for the game provide an opportunity for he and Vidasic to switch but as it is we've got a right footer playing left wing and a left footer playing right wing not completely uncommon in world football of course two terrific young prospects for Australia Nikita Rukovica and Dario Vidasic who has been in good touch this evening it's good work by Archie Thompson to win the ball back this is Wilkshire Vidasic, Heffern and Herring forward to offer support. Not quite sure what uh, Dario Vidasic is trying to achieve there. Whatever it was, didn't come off. An hour played of what's been a fascinating game of football. I fancy there's more goals in this one. Yeah, well, it hasn't let us down. There was uh, a real feeling that this was going to be a wonderful game certainly proved to be that and I agree Simon more twists and turns to come Australia have managed to slow Q8 down the last five minutes it was a frantic opening 10 or so in the second half by the home team Australia really reduced to shadow chasing and a couple of wayward passes like that you just sense maybe Taking their foot off the pedal. Goran Tufedzic again is pacing his technical area, expecting better. Luke Wilch is opening blast. Dean Heffernan Johnny on the spot to make it 2-0 for the Socceroos. Less than five minutes played. Substitute. Ahmad Al Anezi making it 2-1 and then Joseph Nasa leveling the scores at half time. A 
Ball's going to be stopped for a few moments and a chance for Australia perhaps to reorganise a little further. Craig Moore, Nicky Carl and Archie Thompson having an animated discussion. They have been problematic down the years for Australian sides, Q8. In the bake and the staff certainly know that. The uh, injury happens. Miller Yedinak involved. Credit to uh, Goran Tufegzic, particularly for the substitution of Ahmed Alanezi. Trying to wrestle the initiative back for Q8. Pay dividends with the first goal after 40 minutes. Great sight, the Q8 Sports Club packed almost to capacity this evening including a uh, fair smattering of expat Australians and travelling fans. Another look at the goals. Luke Wilkshire in uh, fine fettle in the goal-scoring stakes at the moment, two in two, and Dean Heffernan with a collector's item, his first for his country. And this is where it all changed. Ahmed Alanezi, the substitute, and then Badr al Matawas, sublime through ball, finding Yusuf Nasser. Billy Yedinak needs a new jersey. Nice close up of the tattoo. So uh, lengthy delay. We're back to the action. Aku <laughs> Baltar's ball. Trying to pick out uh, Yusuf Nasser. Badr Alma Tower in there. Sniffing for the opportunity. Getting that tidying up. Feeding Rukovic here, but Thompson is he onside? He is. Mindsman was level. Can he get a decent centre? Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. Well, can we blame the pitch for that one or does Archie have to pop that on the chin? Oh, it does look like Archie's blaming the pitch. He did well to beat the offside trap and he said that he looked across the first time but the troops hadn't arrived in any sort of numbers and then it was just a mistake from Thompson. Pity. Picked up a raspberry from the tens of thousands who are here, collectively. There goes Thompson again. Well, the chances have been thin on the ground for Australia, second half. That was certainly one. See a blue in the stands. Passionate footballing nation. World Cup qualifiers back in 1982. Asian Cup winners 1980. Their golden period under Brazilian coach Carlos Alberto Pereira. Heroes like Faisal Al Dakil, Bashar Abdullah, you mentioned, Harps. They want some modern heroes. Challenge by uh, Yakub Altaha. Well, he plays his club football at this stadium with Al Kuwait. Effenham with the long launch. Yedinak brings it down. Carl shaping to shoot. Yedinak back to Heffernan. Tees it up. Goalkeeper collides with his own man. It was Hussein Fadl. Kuwait escape. It's been a much better period for Australia without them being able necessarily to string any sort of passes together. They've been able to just slow Q8 down. It was like a one-horse race. 
opening periods of that second half. She wait slightly relaxed. Australia have certainly regathered themselves. A little more patient now, looking to pass the ball with more intent. Find the free player and keep Q8 as best they can on the move. Rokovitsia. His first real involvement, Wilkshire. Well recovered after a heavy first touch. And he uh, rather hacks at the shins of Mohamed Ali. Just running out of time and space there, Luke Wilkshire. Cheers from the Kuwaiti fans. I just wonder whether that's uh, perhaps due to the imminent arrival of Ahmad Ajab. We'll wait and see on that. He's a prolific goal scorer domestically. Certainly, uh, substitution is imminent for Al Azraq. Horrible bouncing ball for uh, Matthew Kemp to control. Archie Thompson again offside. Yep. Yeah, Heffernan, weak clearance. Hamad Alanezi, danger here for Australia. Colosimo stands up and eventually it does find its way through to Kalekovic, but with no real power. Those little mistakes can prove costly. Carl. Wilkshire. No width on the right hand side for Australia. Kemp providing it now. Forward for Rukovicia. Good football by Australia. Comes off the head of uh, Hussein Fadl, beautifully controlled by Rukovitsia, is inside the penalty box and forces the save out of Noah Falcaldi. That was super work by the former Perth Glory man. Meantime, Hamad Ali on the counter. Yeah, well off, done. Uh, yet an act for a throw in. Well done, Miller Yednek. He did look like he was fancying that chase terribly. Hamad Ali has got real pace, but Yednek stuck to his guns and won the day and here he's done it again it's good defensive midfield play from Mila Ednek that last attack from Australia was good sort of sums up their last five or eight minutes or so where they've really started to exert more control over the game much better signs for the green and gold Carl closed down very quickly too quickly for the referees like it they're yeah, pushing Heffernan who's noticeably very adventurous down the left hand side it's Really pinning Q8 back. Kemp, when he gets the chance, breaking down the right, resulted in that last good bit of work from Nikita Rukovica. The danger at that point then is the counter attack, but Billy Edenek defused the situation nicely. Now Luke Wilkshire can deliver a mean free kick. It's a flat delivery, comes off a Q80 heads. Australian corner. Q8s uh, are going to make a change in a moment. It's going to actually be Mohamed Jarrah who is a right-sided player, so maybe just picking up on what you said, Harps. Vitasic and uh, Heffernan doing some damage for the green and gold. Down Australia's left, Kuwait's right. Vitasic with the corner meantime. Craig Moore was uh, holding his man. And here's the change. Well, let's indeed see if... The right Simon and Mohamed Tarag does go onto the right hand side. It is the goal scorer, Yusuf Nasser, making way. And one of the goal scorers. He hasn't got much wrong so far. Paul into Vidic. The coach of Kuwait. His changes of work to treat. He'll be very disappointed with the defending that cost his team so dearly. So Mohamed Jarrah of the Al Arabi club is on. Mohamed 
Ali gets a second go at it. Hempen Yedinak in close attendance, but he's not made the latter. Here's Mohamed Jarrah's first involvement, and he goes down inside the box. Huge appeals for a penalty, mainly by the crowd, it has to be said. And Yedinak is robbed. Mohamed Ali with the ball into the box that was far too early and far too eager. Girard has gone into a central midfield position. Heffernan still going forward. Oh, Australia have two men free inside the box there. Vidisic and Thompson. Two eight counter. Here's Hamad Alanezi, scorer of their first goal. Can't quite find the angle, and Kemp's defending is robust and efficient his distribution working out to be not quite the same quality but fortuitously the ball rebounding from Ahmad Ali to Australia's throw just think Hamad Yedinek finding it going a little difficult at the moment he's had a wonderful game but he's looked to be a little stretched when turning and chasing I wonder if everything's okay with Mila Yedinek. There was a head clash with he on he early in the second half. I'm sure that's taken its toll. Fahad Shaheen, very quick to nip in ahead of Nikita Rukovitsia. As we approach the final quarter of an hour in Q8. Shaheen, all left peg, but it's a good one. Mohamed Jarrah, slipping and sliding around on the pitch and lifting it just over the top of Hamad Alanezi's head. Well, he is somewhat of a super sub, Mohamed Jarrah. He... Oh, that's a penalty, by the way, real case for simulation. He was right on it. Rarely makes a starting appearance for Q8. Does come off the bench almost in every game in the Asian Cup qualifiers. And we've probably seen why. He is very lively indeed. And in behind the strikers, he's taken the position of Buddha, who is playing as an out and out striker now with Hamid Alenzi. Here has been uh, called for to attend to Hamad Ali. Here's another look at uh, Mohamed Jarrah's appeal for a penalty. Well, the ref had a terrific view of that. And under instructions from FIFA to try and stamp out simulation, you do wonder why he didn't administer a caution on the run. It was quite clearly, according to my view at least, simulation by the Q80 player. Now it looks as though uh, Hamad Ali's not going to be able to continue. It's been a good uh, contest between he and Kemp down that uh, touchline. So Q8 down to 10 just for the moment. And Australia exploit that. Yet an act finding Licky Carl. It's almost too tight for uh, Australia to work in. with a delightful ball to pick out Heffernan. Oh, 
Australia content to play the ball around. Be patient. Heffernan's ball wasn't the best. Falls for Rukovic here though, who fairly lashes it towards goal without really looking. Yeah, it was a good chance prized by Australia. Need more patience required from Rukovic. To his credit, has looked to get involved from the moment he's come on. There's uh, confirmation of the change. Fahad Alanezi on for Hamad Ali. It's uh, two Alanezis and an Al Enzi. Must be like Smith, Hobbs. <laughs> I'll leave it with you. has uh, so far been well marshaled by Fahad Shaheen. Saleh Al Hindi feeding Yakub Al Taher. Now the danger man, Banner Al Matawa, into the feet of Hamad Alanezi. Little back heel too. Galakovic will get there. Head of the substitute. He's been largely a spectator, Eugene Galakovic. I think that's maybe the second, possibly the third time he's touched the ball in this second half. Very relieved, the green and gold, but that's the case because Q8 had the early running of things in the second half. Certainly for the last 15 minutes, Australia have been in control of the game. A couple of nervous moments on counter-attack when Australia's attack in its own right has broken down. Sort of poor pass or lack of patience, but... A good effort from Australia we're really rocking it's a worrying sign it's this counter-attack motion where Australia do look most troubled well, there's lots of space in midfield there Australia herring back in numbers now this is Hamad Alanezi and uh, Simon Colosimo appeals for offsides and those appeals are heated Craig Moore just having a word with Luke Wiltshire about that Vacant real estate in front of Australia's back four. There's the offside call from the assistant. Ada Al Matawa. Who significantly has gone completely out of the game in recent times. Don't Until speak now. too early. That's a super through ball from Mohamed Jarrah. Here is Bader Al Matawa. And it's a vital challenge by Heffernan. Defence splitting pass from this man on the ball now, Mohamed Jarrah. That was a worrying moment for the Socceroos. So we move into the final 10 minutes. Kuwait trying to find a second win. Jarrah's cross. That was the header of the substitute. And Hamad Alanezi and a good stop by Galekovic. First time Rudy has been called into action in the second half and he was equal to the task. Yeah, good work from Galekovic. Wonderful work again from Mohamed Jafar to really set the cat amongst the pigeons in Australia's defence. Slinging the ball to the back post. Vidicic couldn't deal with it. Galekovic could, held his feet well. A nervous moment for Australia. What you mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, Harps has come to pass. Rukovic here and uh, Vidasic have now swapped flanks. Australia not there yet. That's a great ball in. Really dangerous. Kent partially clear. Craig Moore completes the clearance. Now perhaps there's a break on for Australia. Carl. Hasn't quite been able to boss the game in the way he would like, Nicky Carl. Definitely in field for Wiltshire and back again.
Yedinak making the wits. Carl. Kemp. Yedinak centre. Just taken away from uh, Nikita Rukovic here by Hussein Fardel. Straight to get the throw in though, and the goalkeeper's way out of position. Good punt from Thompson. Simon Colosimo striding forward. Poor ball. Well, one of the key differences between the two teams tonight is the performance of Madea Al Motawa. Talked about him a lot. Nick Carl, you just mentioned him. He's found the going tough. Could be delivering for Australia what the number 17 is doing for Q8. Similar approaches to a, a football match. But the issue with Carl at the moment is always receiving the ball with his back to goal and his first touch more often than not is taking him away from the Q8 goal. He needs to get himself into some sort of shape where he can receive and face the defenders. Now Heffernan's been robbed by Hamad Alanezi. What a great cross though by Yakub al -Tahir. This is Talal Alama. Great ball. Good position here for Q8. Hamad Alama Talgan to the near post, headed clear by Colosimo. Australia under pressure again, anyway will do from Yedinak now, Archie Thompson away. Oh, and it uh, smacks him on the side of the face, rather unfortunately for Archie Thompson. He was onside, just didn't get the break, Australia. Now, Craig Moore, awkward bounce, and that's Bear patch inside the penalty box. Is there one more goal in this game? Have a flurry of them in the first half. one now for either team would be the winner and would be enough to take them to Qatar in 12 months time for the finals of the Asian Cup Vedasic first time Rukovic couldn't get there and away come Q8 in the shape of Fahad Alamezi five or six step overs now Mohamed Jarrah cries of shoot from the home fans even in Arabic, you can understand what that meant. <laughs> it's the universal language, isn't it? But he's an excitement machine, he really is. He's livened up Q8 on the occasions when he's had possession. And still Australia remain rock solid. They've composed themselves nicely. And whilst the game is most certainly still in the balance, they're in much better shape than they were at the start of this second half. has impressed for Q8 after that first five minutes that have elapsed. Hussein Ali, the number four, and Mesut Alenzi. They've been excellent, the two central defenders. They tackle strongly, cleanly, well-timed. There's Craig Moore, who along with Colosimo have provided good ballast as this second half has dragged on. There is uh, Mohamed Jarrah. Quite an impact off the bench. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is Bake happy with the point if that's how it uh, finishes up, Hobbs? Well, I would have thought so. I mean, you can hear the post-game comments now. <laughs> Ecstatic with the start, disappointed we let them back into it. Uh, this is a good team, Q8. This is a tough place to come. For large periods of the game, Australia have been in good nick. I think knowing uh, Pim's fondness for clean sheets will uh, certainly be the major source of disappointment. The Dutchman's going to make another change in a moment. Matt Thompson's going to come on for the last few minutes. Meantime, Farhat Alanezi with the Carlos Tevez-like headband, 
squares it up for Mohamed Jarrah. Again, QA threatened. Saleh Al Hendi trying to find the angle for the shots. Australia again, compact, solid, and they break through Rukovicia. Well, Rukovicia is quick, but uh, even he wouldn't be able to get to that. Kemp, Thompson's touch. Nicky Carl's strength is uh, not really in the air. Gerard shot out of it by Luke Wilkshire. Who again has been hugely influential, not just for his goal in the centre of the park, and that's a horrible cross, a tired looking cross really from Dean Heffernan. And he's had a good game too, Heffernan. Really needed to do better as the game the clock runs out. Nicky Carl's night's work is done. He'll uh, take his leave. Matt Thompson adds a third cap to his collection. He made a Nicky Carl's performance tonight, uh, Harps. You did mention him a few moments yeah, ago. Yeah, no, it wasn't the impact he looked to have. But he hasn't come in the best mental shape. Nick Carl is finding it really tough not playing in. London for Crystal Palace and he realises the importance of, of playing it's a very frustrating experience for him and the way the game unfolded and not to mention the pitch conditions really not tailor-made for Nick Carl but it was the chance for which he's been asking Deep inside the final minute of uh, normal time. It has been an absorbing contest, an entertaining contest. Goals haven't come in the second half, but both sides have had their periods of ascendancy. Australia claiming a corner and Socceroos bench absolutely incensed that they didn't get it. Three minutes of additional, <coughs> excuse me, time at uh, the end of the 90. Craig Moore has uh, taken a knock to the face. Hamad Alamazi has come off even worse. So as it stands, as we uh, move into injury time, Q8 will remain top of the group if this ends in a draw. On the eight points, Australia the same, but having scored one fewer goal and uh, Aman tucked in just a point behind on seven so it looks like as though it will go down to the final match day exciting conclusion to the qualifying process Australia against Indonesia in Brisbane Oman host Kuwait in Muscat Wonderful game to watch that one. I've been very impressed both with Oman and Q8. Overall, is this the, uh, the sort of performance that you anticipated from this inexperienced yeah. soccer lineup? Yeah, I was looking forward to it. I had a. I thought the mentality of the team was good. We've spoken about it all the week Simon how different the situation is and how much more they look up for it and believe in themselves and I certainly think it's been a performance that reflects that they're not out of trouble yet however let's hope that the good work isn't undone Sona Colosimo's mistake Dean Heffernan helping him out straight over a minute to go he waits make it a final push to try and win it to Galekovic says I love that sets Dario Vidicic away in the bait wants to throw on Bruce Jitte for the final few moments. Archie Thompson, who uh, is potentially going to be replaced, has been robbed by Fahad Shaheen. That's a terrific chase back from Thompson, however, who then linked up with his Melbourne teammate. 
Mate Matthew Kemp to make sure no trouble was to eventuate. It is Thompson who'll make way for Jute. He had a couple of chances tonight. Archie, it hasn't quite gone his way. He'll be disappointed in that. I question his effort. So Bruce Jute of uh, Genshla Birligi in Turkey, on for his eighth cap for his country. And his uh, first since was back in stand back in 2008. Another one who's struggling for game time. Just five appearances for his club this season. Three minutes of injury time are up. Is there time for one more Q8 sortie? Saleh Alhendi, Jarrah. Bader al Matawa, who's always dangerous, down he goes on the edge of the box. Play on, says the referee. Well, that could be better than that to get away from Dean Heffernan. And it was a wonderful pass from Mohamed Jarrah. And it was a wonderful game in Q8 City. Terrific entertainment, four goals all in the first half. It ends in a draw, qualification for Qatar will have to wait for Australia, but a point gained and perhaps a point proved in Kuwait by this inexperienced squad. And now uh, victory against Indonesia in March will be the aim for what will surely be a similar group of players. So there we go, a 2-2 draw between Kuwait and Australia. Great entertainment, hope you enjoyed it too. For now, for me, Simon Hill and uh, Andy Harper, we'll hand you back to the studio.